Hello, this is the Provoke Prawn, and this is my favourite Steel Series mouse so far, the Steel Series Aerox 5 Wireless. This is not only the best mouse that Steel Series has launched that I've had my hands on, but also possibly my main for a while, maybe alongside the Rocket Cone XP, which I also really liked recently. And this is a fantastic nine button wireless mouse that weighs in at 74 grams and comes in alongside the Aerox 3 and the Aerox 9. Now I've done videos on the Aerox 3 before and I'm going to do a comparison video against this and the Aerox 3 and I'm also shortly going to be doing the Aerox 9 in the next couple of weeks so subscribe if you aren't already to see that. In this video I'm going to be talking to you about what's interesting about the Aerox 5 wireless and why it might be appealing. I'm also going to be unboxing and showing off what's included in the box and talking about the various highlights of it. One obviously is the lightweight design. It also has a number of other features that make it interesting including fast charging capabilities. It has both Bluetooth and wireless connectivity and a nine button layout with this interesting up down flick switch on the top side of it which is curious and I both like and loathe it at the same time. More on why later on and I'm also going to include all the specs in the description as well as links somewhere to buy it so you can check that out and find out what's what in a bit more detail. But This is a fantastic mouse. I've been using it for a couple of weeks now and I'm really liking it for a number of reasons. One is the wonderful fit in my hand Two is the overall comfort, and the three is the button layout design. Now this uses next-gen golden micro switches, which are IP54 rated as part of the outer shell. So this is IP54 rated, which means that it will survive water and dust ingress, but it's not fully waterproof. It will just survive splashes and things like that. But that is good, obviously, because it has that classic holy design in it with this sort of honeycomb like finish basically to shed weight so it's a wireless mouse but it's still designed to be as lightweight as possible and that's obviously appealing in the current era where everyone's doing lightweight mice but it's not the lightest by any means but being a lightweight wireless mouse is certainly key to being competitive in the current market and it's quite difficult to release one but as you'll see it has USB-C charging so it has a USB-C cable included in the box and USB-C port makes it easy enough to plug in when you need to now this thing apparently has up to 180 hours of battery life but that's when you're using it over Bluetooth and obviously you want to use a 2.4 gigahertz wireless dongle to get the best signal I found that I don't get anywhere near 180 hours of battery life out of it. I've had to plug it in a few times during the last few weeks, but I do use it all day long and in the evenings and for long gaming sessions at the weekend, so it has a lot of heavy use. It's also worth noting that you can get up to 40 hours of extra battery out of it by just 15 minutes of charge, so it's fast charging with ease. You have a USB-C 2.4 gigahertz dongle and obviously the extender in the box as standard so you can put it close to the mouse and keep that signal nice and strong although even plugged in directly to the PC I found the signal is really good as is the case with SteelSeries mice. Nice solid connection, no problems in that regard and on the other side you'll see there's some large PTFE areas. Now a close look at the shell and you'll see it has that sort of matte finish that the Aerox lineup has been known for. On the underside you'll see there's a 2.4 gigahertz and Bluetooth switch so you can switch between them and then on top you have a DPI profile switching button, you have side buttons on the side and then you can see a look at how it fits in the hand. Now the one of the reasons I like this mouse over the Aerox 3 is it is sits a bit taller, is a bit larger, it's designed for claw and palm grip so a reasonable fit for me. I find this mouse to be a little bit larger than the Aerox, which means it sits more comfortably in the hand and pushes up nicely into my palm as well, which is great. Ignore the flashing RGB, that's simply because it's not connected to the PC at the moment. I'll show you a bit more about the RGB later on once it's paired. But now you can see just how it sits on the desk and then what it's like in the hand and the position of how you can put your hand on it and you can see sort of where it's pushing into my hand here and I have found I'll be honest and as you'll see from these shots there is a side button at the front which has a sort of metallic look to it and that gives a very good response it's also an interesting button because as standard it 
use F3 is the button. I'll go into the software and show you the button programmability later. But as standard, that's F3. Obviously, it can be reprogrammed to other things. What I find is it's just out of reach of my thumb. Now, this is obviously going to vary depending on the size of your hand. But I found I can't quite reach it, which is a shame because that's a nice little sort of extra button paddle around that area. However, it is still very comfortable and you have access to multiple buttons because of the other layout. And as you can see, those feet are slick enough that it will slide about on the desk really easily. And because it's lightweight, it's really easy to move around. It's a comfortable mouse to use and also there's no scratchy horribleness from the feet either. So it's nice and quiet and feels comfortable to use. For gaming sessions, I've certainly found it enjoyable. You can see here a little snippet from Ready or Not here. And that's sort of a tactical FPS shooter. If you've not played it, it's great fun. Check out my gameplay channel to see some footage of that. It's a great game. But the response from the mouse is really good and is very responsive. And also the button setup is nice too. There is minimal pre-travel in the switches. So you basically click and you've got the action right away. And you can feel a nice response from them as well. I'll show you some more of that a bit later on. It's also worth noting that these aren't the Steel Series Optical Mechanical Switches that was on the Prime lineup. But they are still nice and there is very minimal difference between the click sound and feel on each of the switches and the main buttons as well. A close up look at the side and you'll see the extra thumb buttons. So that top one, the long one above the two next to the thumb is intriguing because that's an up down flick switch. So essentially you have to push your thumb up into the air or down from above, press on it. Rather than pushing it in towards the mouse, you have to push it down towards the mouse mat or up towards the sky, which is a weird design and a very unusual one, which didn't work that well for me. I found that it was difficult to press and a bit awkward. I think it's a bit of a strange design. It's a bit curious. I can't really comprehend how you'll be able to put your hand into a position where you'll be able to press that easily unless you're using claw grip and a bit of a weird hand format. But it is a curious design. Also, I do feel like these side buttons are a little bit too shiny. One thing I will note is they do stick out more than they did on the Aerox 3, which makes them easy to press. But they're a bit slick, as you can see from these shiny shots which makes them not so easy to feel and press without your thumb slipping around, which can be a bit of a downside. Now the mouse itself, as I said, this is a lightweight wireless mouse. They claim it comes in at 74 grams, and that is indeed what I found when I put it on the scales. So it's fairly lightweight. It's certainly not as lightweight as the wired versions that are out there, but it's still nice enough and you certainly feel it. One of the other things you'll see when you compare it with the Aerox 3 that you can see here on the left is it looks a bit larger, it looms a little bit larger, as I said. It feels a bit taller off the desk, feels a bit larger in general. The side buttons stick out a bit more. I'll leave all the specs and the size and things in the description, but generally I've found that the Aerox 5 is a much nicer feeling mouse to use, and it just sits nicely in my hand. The other thing I found is the area where the thumb buttons are, it's a bit hard to see from these shots, is sort of a little dip. So there's a dip on the inside, kind of has an ergonomic feel to it, and it's certainly more like that on the Aerox 5 than it was on the 3, which means that it feels like you're pushing your thumb into a nice recess there. And I think that's a definite bonus of the design of this one. It just feels a lot more comfortable. It also has a slightly different look to it. And I really sort of like the extra button layout, even though that up down switch is a bit weird. That front silver looking one at the front is a nice addition if your thumb's long enough, or perhaps if you're using the claw grip, I tend to favor a palm grip style. Now, this mouse has three different RGB zones, and the lighting isn't particularly fancy. You'll see a bit more of it, obviously, as we go through. And that is beneficial because it won't eat into the battery life as much. But you can see there's some glow on the underside and a little bit around the edge of the bottom of the back. And you can also see it through the top of a shell where your palm would sit. And you can obviously adjust this in the Steel Series software, which I'll show a bit later on. And I, as I said already, I have found that with the default settings, it does go and burn through the battery a little bit too quickly. You do get more battery life out of Bluetooth, but generally speaking, you'll be sticking to the 2.4 gigahertz. However, the fast charging means that it's wonderful for getting it back up to speed really easily. 
The other thing I really like about the Aerox lineup is the finish. So you'll notice there's quite a matte finish to it. it has a sort of semi rough texture to it. it. Doesn't feel rough on the hand, but what it does do is it makes it easier to grip onto. You can see just the difference in the body of the mouse compared to those shiny side buttons that I was talking about. I do like how easy they are to access, but they're very slick. And if your thumb gets particularly oily or sweaty during gameplay sessions, you might find them a, a bit of an annoyance. It's a bit difficult to differentiate between the front and rear, for example, but they do jut out far enough. And here you can see some of the up down click action on that side button, a bit odd, bit of a strange design, very unusual, but perhaps you'll be able to find a logic for what you would use that button for and how you would get it to work. And here you can see some of the mouse wheel play and how that functions. It looks like a nice slick racing tire, which I quite like. It's got a nice design to it. It also gives a good bit of tactile feedback, but it's certainly not loud or annoying, so I've found that to be quite pleasurable. I'm going to leave clips at the end of this video with just the mouse sounds, if you want to hear the button sounds and things like that. So stick with me to the end. Be sure to watch the end to see that. And hit that subscribe button if you've enjoyed so far. appreciate your support. But what I'm showing is a wonderful mouse for a number of different reasons that's great fun to play with. Also has both stealthy looks and a nice finish on it. Obviously the holes might be a concern over time but it is IP54 rated so a blast of compressed air in there should sort out any dust problems and also you don't necessarily need to worry about getting a little bit of moisture in there if you've got hot hands or you're a bit sloppy with your drinks but it isn't fully waterproof so you won't be washing it. Now from experience of gaming sessions, I found it really responsive and that's one of the reasons obviously that it is one of my faves. It's comfortable, loads of buttons to play around with, a good fit in the hand, nice and lightweight, reasonably good battery life, obviously the ability for fast charging and I really like just the responsive action from it. it has some really good buttons that are really comfortable to use and great fun to game with and obviously that's really important and also really accurate so I've not had any problems with this. Now I'm not a pro gamer by any means but I have found that it's given me the response that I need to play well and also I've just not had any problems with it. Switching mouse regularly for review purposes can sometimes be a drama when you have to use one that just is a bit awkward. This mouse is not awkward. It was a nice immediate feel and a familiar feel from the Aerox 3 and yet a more comfortable design and so a lot easier to game with and that is a nice round off of what it's like because essentially I have very few complaints about this mouse. I think the up down switch is a bit weird but you don't have to use it so it's not really the end of the world and those side buttons are a bit shiny and maybe the battery life would be a bit could be a bit longer and I want to plug in less but there are some minor complaints about what is otherwise a fantastic mouse. And now I'm going to dive into the software quickly and show you what's possible in there. And here we are within the SteelSeries GG software, which has replaced SteelSeries engine. Click into the engine here, and then you can go into the Aerox 5 wired, which is currently in wired mode, but is also 100% charged. And a few things you'll note immediately. You have five different CPI levels, and you can switch between those by just pressing the button on top of the mouse where it sits behind the mouse wheel. Now a quick point of note, I haven't mentioned the specs yet, but this has 400 IPS, 40 Gs acceleration, and a thousand hertz polling rate. Further views into the settings here, and you'll also notice down the bottom that there is a high efficiency mode, which you can turn on to improve battery life, and an illumination smart mode, which is designed to basically stop the lights from turning on when the mouse is moving. These two settings obviously improve battery life and ensure that the mouse lasts longer. You can also see that you can set a sleep timer so that when it's not in use that lighting turns off. That makes life a little bit easier. The polling rate is also adjustable here, so 1000 hertz polling rate. Now the next bit of interest for me is the button settings. So you can see that you have a diagram of where all the buttons are. B6, for example, is the CPI toggle, which is behind the mouse wheel, as I said. And then you can also see all the side buttons. You can also click here to see the left view, so you can see the view from the side. Here at the bottom, you can see some of that illumination. The front silver button here that I was talking about earlier on, as standard, that's button 9. And as standard, that's F3, which, by the way, if you don't know, 
is the same as Control and F in Chrome, for example. So you can press that to just find things, which is actually quite useful for productivity reasons. But that's the default setting, whereas the other ones are F2 and F3. Maybe one of those could be assigned to F5, so you can quick save in games. Then you basically, so that's the up and down switch, which is good because that means you won't accidentally press those. The side buttons, button 5 and button 4, a program with button 4 and 5, are standard. You have a macro editor in here, which you can go in, so you can obviously set up macros and record those and assign those to buttons. But you can also go through and customize quite a few different button set up so you can for example assign a button to a keyboard button instead you could set it to media playback buttons you could set one button to launch an application so maybe if like me you find that up down button is a bit awkward and you don't really want to use it you could deactivate it or you could set it to launch an application so it's not easy to accidentally activate but maybe you could set it so if you want to launch something particular you could just press that and launch it from there so a nice bit of customization options in terms of there. Now you also have the RGB lighting and you can see the three different zones. So you essentially have the front zone, which admittedly isn't very much. It's kind of buried within the shell. And then the other two zones and you can change the lighting in here quite simply. You can also have a reactive lighting effect. So it will obviously react when you click it and you can choose from a color in there. So we get a purple, for example and then set to do that so every time you click the mouse it changes purple and the other thing i note with the rgb lighting is that you will note if the battery is running low that the lighting changes and it sort of mouse flashes to let you know it's running low so if you're not thinking mm, what's going on here it's not working properly or is it getting low on battery you can actually see that at a glance which is pretty handy so there you have it hopefully an interesting insight into the aerox 5 wireless come back to see the versus video with the aerox 3 let me know in the comments if you've got any questions also stick around to hear the mouse button sounds this has been the provoke prawn thanks for watching